And good evening, Commanders. Welcome to the entrance to the Formula Rift. <laughs> Trying to do a slightly mysterious voice, but there we go. <laughs> Welcome to Thursdays. Welcome to my Elite Dangerous stream. It's always wonderful to be here. Lovely to have so many folks on the chat already. That's really, really cool. Um, and we will be in the game shortly. I'm just getting my, my Elite to set up. I've already got some wings and stuff is coming on. So fantastic. Uh, so how are we doing? Um, so anyway, the chat's going completely bananas. <laughs> But anyway, lovely to see you all. Lovely to see you. I, I was looking at the chat very briefly on the way in and noticing that people were having some issues. So I don't know what that is. Um, everything, seem, everything seems okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna ignore that and and, and pray for good luck. Yeah, the the, um, the 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 streaming gods shall be with me and the RNG is on my side. I am I am specially anointed. <laughs> and I shall rewrite the law if not. <laughs> So there we go, never mind. Anyway, it's lovely to see so many on the stream. Thank you very much. Um, I've got some wing stuff already set up. So um, with no further ado, um, I'm in the game. And I'm, I'm slightly transparent. I look like I've been beamed up. Hang on a minute. I'm having to reset my camera a little bit. I don't know what's going on here, whether my green screen is not quite um, where I'm expecting it to be. Let me just give that a quick tweak because I don't really want to be transparent. Well, you know, I, I like to be transparent in a metaphorical sense. In the literal sense. <laughs> there we go. It's not quite right, is it? So if I make it so that it's not transparent, then my smoothness goes a bit awry. So yeah, I don't want to go that way. So something's not quite right with my illumination. I'll have to go and figure that out. But it's good enough. It's good enough for straight. No, look, I'm still transparent. <laughs> I'm not being transparent. Um, <laughs> I can't be computers. <laughs> You set them up once and they're absolutely fine. And then the next day, they're not working the same way as they were. What can you do? Anyway, I'll have a play around with the lighting. That, that's good enough. Well, that's not quite good enough. Tiny little bit, come on, come on, give me a... It's normally pretty good, this, but it's not playing ball tonight. Don't know why that is. Well, that would be gray, that just looks... Oh well, never mind. Maybe the exposure's wrong or something. Anyway, um, <laughs> it's enough of that. Um, I'll be slightly transparent. There we go. <laughs> I think it reduce my smooth. No, I know it's smooth with a capital S, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you with a capital R. <laughs> uh, oh, it's Frontier Streams. Oh, something went wrong. With Frontier Stream. Oh dear. What were they streaming about? I missed it. I was watching Star Trek: The Next Generation. <laughs> I keep forgetting the, the Frontier Stream is on before mine. Um, but never mind. Never mind. Anyway, so um something went wrong I drew the ghost yeah i'm i, I do look at, yeah i'm gonna i don't know whether it's my lighting or i've knocked something anyway never mind it's working well enough um i'll i'll go and investigate what's causing the green screen not to be entirely thing so there we go anyway we are on stream tonight now hopefully most of you are here and i can see there are quite a few ships appearing um just in my local instance now i'm not in a ship i'm not in a station because there aren't any out here um uh, and so I, I rocked up near one of the fleet carriers. Now the first thing we must do, of course, oh, they were doing a challenge in open. Okay, a race across, two, four, like just across the bubble with some limited diamonds in open with players knowing where they were. They ran out of fuel very quickly. Okay, did they did they make it? Um, <laughs> I'm the ghost of slow me. Yeah. Um, Ah, oh there. Who knows what's going on? Anyway, so weird stuff happens in the format I'm rift. Anyway, that's maybe that's what's going on. I'm completely transparent. That's really weird. Um, so there we go. Uh, right. So first things first, we must go and have a look at all the fleet carriers that arrived. There are even more this week than there were last week, um, which is which is very cool. Um, oh, they weren't in open. Ah, that's the, they didn't make it. and They weren't in open. See, amateurs. Have they, how, how long were they playing? Because we met, I mean, I mean, I know the Salome thing we lost, okay? And then, you know, we've, we've talked about Salome and the whole Harry Potter thing many, many times on this stream. Um, but we lasted an hour and 45 minutes in open. Has anybody ever beaten that on, on mass? I, I haven't heard that they have. So um, I'm still quite proud of that, even though we lost, so. <laughs> Ancient history now, of course, that is, uh, that's three. Can you believe that's more than three years ago? Um, that's a long, long time ago. Right, so we have <laughs> more fleet carriers than planets. Um, um, had, hey Drew, have you seen the forum post about Raxler in the Amiga version of Elite? No, I haven't. Uh, so, oh, I need to investigate that. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Um, so we have, how many fleet carriers do we have? 
we have, uh, well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's 10 there. Another four there. That's 14, 15, 16 fleet carriers. <laughs> I'm quite proud of that. Um, so there we go. Fleet carriers are cool. Right. We are, um, well, the Tanny Lawn. Okay, so we've seen the Tanny Lawn before. Tanny Lawn is from Michael Moorcock. So there's a lot of literary connections. I do like the... Um, uh, the literary connections here. So we have Gilgamesh. Well, that's the epic of Gilgamesh. That's a great story. Well, if we did that one. Eye of the Moon is from um, um, Mike Singleton, Lords of Midnight, uh, fame. Um, we have Warrior. Fair enough. Good name. Uh, we have The Lady of Fate. Now, this is a new one. I haven't seen this one before. Um, so if the owner of Lady of Fate, I'm going to go there first. Let's go and rendezvous with the Lady of Fate, and I'll explain who she is, because she's quite important in Elite Dangerous Lord, if you don't know. Um, so, if the owner of um, Lady of Fate is uh, on the on the stream, do let me know. Uh, we'll give you a little shout out, and um, let's rendezvous there, everybody. Everybody, head for the Lady of Fate um, fleet carrier in the first instance because she is actually quite cool. Um, she's actually. Oh, hang on, I'm actually here. Um, I'm actually. <laughs> I don't even have to super cruise. I'm actually here. <laughs> Um, I must have encountered this one before. Okay, cool. Uh, anyway, so Lady of Fate, I am here. Um, okay, I will. I'm going to click on that link actually, and just make sure I've got that um, for later on. So thank you very much for that. Um, I haven't got time to read it right now, but I will look it up. I will. I will do some commentary on it. Um, so Lady of Fate, um, for those of you who um, don't know, okay, I'm going to close into um, comms range. Ooh, try not to hit the asp. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever that was. <laughs> um, so Lady of Fate is obviously a, a fleet carrier here, uh, but Lady of Fate is named for the original deity in Elite Dangerous. Okay, so um, in the Dark Wheel, which is the book that came with the original... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Kuhei, sorry, that, sorry for bashing your ship. Hope I didn't do any damage. At least there's a fleet carrier here you could repair it with. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> um, feel free to nudge my ship back in return if necessary. Um, so in the original Dark Wheel uh, book, back in the Core Worlds, which of course where we started, um, the... Um, well, I'll get my thrusters to stop. There we go. Um, the... Um, uh, now I, I was trying to play around with the dead zone on my because I, I saw my I saw a few people saying that Drew's, Drew's never getting his dead zone correct. Now I've tried to get that right and it's whatever I'm doing is not working. So, um, oh has it? Oh it has. Look there we go. Look I think I'm I haven't quite got the dead zone right, but it's good enough that I'm not I'm I'm very slowly rotating. So <laughs> there we go. Um, but something about my external camera controls isn't quite isn't quite happy. So. Now it's not, see that it was fine. Now it's not again, um, which is annoying. Anyway, I'll sit there and try and rotate. Um, so yeah, we have seals for a reason. Yeah, <laughs> apologies for that. Uh, so in the original Dark Wheel novella, okay, um, there are two main characters. There's Alex and a girl called Alicia. Now, when they are escaping from Tianisla, uh, the Tianisla orbital graveyard, where they pinch a Cobra Mark III. From the the you know from the from the mausoleum there the graveyard, um, basically they in, they they the, the Alicia reads this sort of religious poem out, and it is um, to a deity called Randomus or Randomius Factoria, or Random Factor in English obviously, and um, she is also known as the Lady of Fate, and she is supposed to be the patron sort of goddess of of long distance travelers and explorers. So if you're out here in the dark with me on this Formidine Rift um, mission, the Lady of Fate is your guardian out here, okay? So um, <laughs> to have the fleet carrier Lady of Fate along with us, I think is good luck, okay? So we're gonna treat it as good luck. So that's, that's the reason why we have Lady of Fate. So that's a great name for a fleet carrier. So thank you, whoever that was, for bringing the Lady of Fate along because that is gonna, um, that is that's, that's going to that's going to imbue us with good fortune along this trip, so that's really really good. Um, now we are, as you are doubt, undoubtedly aware, in the um, in between. Actually, I deliberately chose this spot. 
okay, deliberately chose this spot for two reasons. We are almost exactly halfway between the Heart Nebula and the Soul Nebula, not exactly, as you can see, but close enough um, halfway between the two. Um, and this particular location was, um, you know, some of the lore of Elite Dangerous happened in this system, okay, some of the lore um, of Elite Dangerous happened in this system. There was a clue in Galnet a long, long time ago now, okay, when Galnet was still full of stuff, okay, uh, and I was writing for Galnet, there was a clue which sent you to this location, okay. Um, so, um, uh, it's, um, it's, it's deliberately been put in. Now, if I just pop it up, if I can find it, um, Okay, here we go. This is this is the actual uh, galnet that was sent um, at the time. Hopefully you can see this. Let me just pop that on the main screen. Uh, where's my stream gone? There it is. Right. <laughs> uh, I may need to bring this up a tiny bit. There we go. Uh, boom, boom. There we go. Okay, so this was a galnet article transmitted in October 3302, which is the year 2014, I think. 2014 or 2015, I can't remember how it works now. Um, so um, this this was transmission, okay, curious transmission partly decoded, okay. In early August, an antique Cobra Mark III was interred at the TN Isla Orbital Graveyard, okay. So things happening at the TN Isla Orbital Graveyard in Elite was always my way of telling the player base something's up, guys, something's up, okay. So it was a very, you know, you know if something happens at TN Isla, it's like, Ooh. Pay attention. That's that's how it used to work. Okay. Um, so in early August, an antique Cobra Mark III. So an antique Cobra Mark III. Okay. This should have got everybody's kind of law um, tentacles twitching because this was like, okay, okay Cobra Mark III, check. Uh, antique, check. DNA's orbital graveyard, check. Okay. Three things going on. Uh, shortly before the ship was laid to rest, a beacon aboard the vessel was transmitted a repeating sequence of curious characters. Uh, and the sequence was picked up by several listening relay posts in the TNS system and has now been determined it contains content obscured with an unknown encryption. Okay. And the encrypted data was followed by an apparently meaningless clear text phrase. The vain queen rides a giraffe that remembers her daughter's hero. Intelligence services with the Empire Federation Alliance are said to be investigating the message, but no official statements have yet been made. Both the sender and intended recipient of the message remain a mystery. So this was one of the early clues that came along for the Formidine Rift. Okay, The vain queen rides a giraffe that remembers her daughter's hero. Now, anybody who knows me shouldn't have had too much, too much, too much difficulty with this particular clue. Um, because what it meant was... Um, it's, it's astronomy, okay? It's astronomy. Let me show you. For those of you, I mean, this is all ancient history now, but it is a sort of part of the law. Um, it's part of the adventure that we, we kind of conducted for the Formidine Rift. So I'm just going to pop up here. Let me just close that down. Um, another application. Let's see if this will work with Leap Dangerous at the same time. Um, where is it? I've got too many icons. There it is. <laughs> Yeah, I will have a play around with the um, potentiometers on my um, thrust master. I've got a T T sixteen thousand dot M. I don't know what the dots mean. Um, why have you popped up on the wrong monitor? You stupid thing! I want that to be on the other monitor, which I can't do. Why can't I do that? Uh, computers. Ah, oh, hang on, is this? No. I want the window to be somewhere else, and it's not letting me do it. Sky and viewing options, no. Configuration window, that's where it should be. Ah, this is annoying. Why is it suddenly decided to jump into a different window? I can't get it onto the window I want. Ah, annoying, never mind. <laughs> um, right, um, I'm going to find another way of doing this then. That is frustrating that I can't get that to pop over there. It's not letting me do it. Uh, I can't 
find an option for the window display. Ah, how annoying. It's definitely not there. Mm. Anyway, there might be an alternative way of doing this. Right, let me close this off because that's definitely not working. Uh, let me try. Let me try Space Engine. <laughs> if you haven't got uh, whether this will actually work, we'll find out. Uh, whether I can fly Elite Dangerous and Space Engine at the same time on the same computer, both using the graphics card. It might melt, but anyway, there we go. Um, let's see if this will work. Just because I just want to show you something about this clue. The Vane Queen. Okay. Um, let's see if it will start up. Come on, you can do it, computer. Right, here we go. By the way, if you haven't actually played Space Engine, it's worth downloading, okay? Um, it's full of eye candy. It's better than Elite Dangerous in some places. Um, and it is um, a fantastic tool. Plus, you can land on planets. <laughs> All planets. Uh, even if they've got atmospheres and stuff. So, um, But it's not really a game, per se. It's, it's, it's a bit weird. Um, so, But it's, it's very, very cool. Uh, right, so I'm going to go to, well, I'm actually here, look, I'm in Seoul here at the moment. Um, and what I want to do is I'm going to back away from Seoul so we can see the stars. Now, from Earth, um, I mean, I'm just going to get out of range of Seoul so we can see the sky without the star being really, really retained. Okay, so this is the, this is the star, um, this is the star, star field from Earth, okay? Now, if you know your constellations, you'll be fairly familiar with this. I've just got to find out which way up we are. This is the Milky Way. Which is very, very, very pretty. Right there is, um, uh, there is the constellation of Lyra, for example, and there is uh, uh, Cygnus with Deneb in it, which is the Summer Triangle. And over here, if I'm correct in getting this the right way around, uh, uh, that's Scorpius. So we don't want to go that way. Uh, of course, with no Earth. Right there's the Plough, which is upside down. Let me rotate that the right way around so we can see it. Um, that's quite useful as well. So the plough is a very easy constellation to find. Now, if you move over here, you've got Opturus and various other constellations as well. Now, I'm actually looking for the autumn stuff. Okay, so I kind of, <laughs> uh, it's gonna be down this way. There is, over here, is, there's the Magellanic Clouds. There is, yeah, you'll be very familiar with this from Elite Dangerous. This is the constellation of Orion, okay? Um, with the three belt star Sirius down there and up here you can see the Pleiades very famous for the Thargoids nowadays and the Hyades um, star clusters here up here is the Andromeda galaxy with the constellation of Andromeda and over there is the square of Pegasus now up here is an area of space where the Andromeda constellation moves into the Perseus constellation and um, there's also up here, I just need to find it, where is it? The w of Cassiopeia, uh, it's Andromeda. Oh, it's this way, sorry. Uh, where are we? Where's the plan? Okay, it should be, there it is, right. Bang in the center of screen, this is Cassiopeia. Okay, now Cassiopeia in Greek legend was a queen, okay? And she boasted that her daughter, Andromeda, who's down here, um, was the fairest of all maidens. And um, the gods took exception to this and punished her, okay? Um, so Cassiopeia is the vain queen, okay? Cassiopeia is the vain queen. And between the two is a constellation called Camelopardus, which is the constellation of the giraffe. So the vain queen rides a giraffe that remembers her daughter's hero. The vain queen Cassiopeia rides a giraffe, Camelopardus. Andromeda is the daughter. And the hero is Perseus. And here's Perseus, okay? Constellation Perseus. So basically that's telling you this area of space. What is in this area of space, okay? That's of interest. That could be potentially interesting. Well, for those of you who knew your astronomy, um, Heart Nebula is in this region of space. Okay, the Heart and Soul Nebula is in this region of space. And with the magic of Space Engine, we can travel there instantaneously, which is really, really cool. <laughs> None of that tedious mucky about in hyperspace, like in Elite Dangerous. Um, 
So uh, we can travel straight there, and um, this is effectively where we are in Elite Dangerous. You know, there's the Heart and Soul Nebula as seen in Space Engine. It's not quite rendered the same way, but you know, folks. Are. So that was how that clue worked, okay? So that's enough of that. Uh, but if you haven't played Space Engine, go and get it. It's definitely worth it. Okay, it's on Steam. Uh, I don't get paid for it, but it's very, very cool. Um, so that clue was to lead you here. That clue was to lead you here in 3302. That's what it was all about, okay? Because you had the original clue of Riot Ridquart line, which was pointing in this general direction. Um, and then that clue was like, yes, this is, this is the correct way to go. Somebody is beaming information out to this part of space in an encrypted form for reasons, okay? And so the Vein Queen um, is a heart and soul. And you, you've got closer coordinates for heart and soul later on. Uh, so that's why we're here, because this is where the law of the Formidine Rift, this was the entrance to, to that particular part of space. And then we'll go on from there a little bit more. Loads of, loads of ships, fantastic, fantastic. Um, so yeah, that's looking very pretty. Um, what have we got? Anacondas, um, asps, asps are good. It's even like there's an imperial, is that an eagle or is that an imperial courier? I'm not sure. But anyway, very cool. Nice to see some imperial ships. That's half of the Empire. Um, so that's good. Uh, right, more fleet carriers then. Who else have we got? So that's Lady of Fate. Okay, and a little bit of an entree into the lore of why we're in this system. Um, so the next one along is the Valiant. Good name. Uh, the Emperor's Revenge. We've seen the Emperor's Revenge before. That's very cool as well. Uh, Metamorph. <laughs> Could be a Red Dwarf reference. Uh, Wimbledon Common. Uh, for those of you who are not from the UK, you won't understand what that is at all. Uh, Wimbledon Common is a reference to the Wombles, <laughs> um, who are a bunch of very um, forward-thinking, sort of strange creatures, really, who lived on Wimbledon Common, which is a place in the UK. It's a it's a kind of park, basically, in London. Um, and these creatures in the 70s had their own cartoon show, and they basically went around tidying everything up. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty much all they did. Uh, they had a very natty theme tune though, so uh, it's worth checking out the Wombles theme tune, okay? Uh, if you just want some classic uh, retro British nostalgia from the 1970s, w the Wombles and Wimbledon Common is where you need to go. Um, the Absolution, we've seen the Absolution before, that's fantastic. Um, contents may differ. <laughs> you've seen that one as well. I do like all of the names that the fleet carries, I have to say. Um, the Araxius Prime, yes, we've seen that one. Uh, Remember Salome? Remember Salome, yes. So yes, that's that's important. Um, the Guru Meditation we have seen before as well. So uh, these uh, these ones I think have been with us right from the start. Um, the Admiral Bembo Inn. Now that's a great name. Now who knows where that's from? That is um, that is from a uh, Robert uh, Louis Stevenson book called Treasure Island, I believe. Um, now the Admiral Bembo Inn is the place where the adventure there starts. So in Treasure Island, a young I think Jack Hawkins is the name. Um, he's a young boy who basically meets uh, Long John Silver. Um, you know, classic classic pirate, one leg, you know, parrot, uh, Long John Silver, um, and um, basically goes on his adventures on the on the good ship Hispaniola from the Admiral Bembo Inn. That's where they start. So. Um, so that's that's great. There's another literary connection there. We have Treasure Island along with us as well. And the final one down the bottom here is the CRV Nightwish, which is a great name as well. So that's really good. I think I'm definitely going to head for the Admiral Bembo. So let's go, let's go there next. Let's have a pint at the Admiral Bembo Inn. I quite like that idea. Let's let's head there while we while we keep chattering. Um, so I'm just going to cautiously back away from my uh, my entourage here, so I don't whack anybody. Um, it is, it is an Imperial Eagle extent, right? Somebody sent me a friend request, I think they just said. No, I think I'm good, that's good. Um, so, so yeah, let's turn around gently. Head to the Admiral Bembo Inn. And there's there's a view of, I don't know which one that is actually, whether that's the uh, Heart Nebula or the Soul Nebula, but we are in space here, in between the two, which is quite good. So let's just have a quick spin around at the other one. We should travel a little bit further into deep space, actually. There's the other one. So one's got a sort of pinky texture to it, and the other one has a sort of orangey texture, which is very nice. So it's nicely rendered. Although they're not as good as they were, which is a bit of a shame. When we first came out here, um, back in the year 3301 and 3302, um, the nebulas were much higher def. Um, so Frontin never 
kind of admitted to it, but they, they did tweak down the quality of the nibblers, which is a little bit of a shame. Um, but um, they're, they're still quite pretty. Look at the colours there, that's amazing. <laughs> Gonna fly through that. Um, I mean, I know they're silly because why would ships have different colour things? But they do look cool. <laughs> right, there we go. Let's get the frame shift drive activated. Uh, let's fly along there. So the Admiral Bimbo Inn. Let's go and have a point there. I've never been to the Admiral Bimbo in real life. I don't know. It's supposed to. It's somewhere near Bristol. Whether it actually really exists, I don't know. Actually, um, it's probably a literary thing. But um, uh, so there we go. Uh, yeah. Oh, Treasure Planet. I haven't seen Treasure Planet. I have to, have, have to go and watch that. Um, why is my see I had that frame shift drive set perfectly correct and it's still overshot never mind I had to do a loop of shame live on stream <laughs> oh hang on why is, why is it why is it reset my oh, what's it doing or is the ship just oh there it is for some reason it I don't know if I click something there, it reset my lock. Um, Admiral Bimbo, there we go. Oh, <laughs> arcs are directly converted into dies, which are the exhaust. Is that how it works? <laughs> Random rationalization of, of perceived effects. Right, come on, don't over exaggerate this time. Um, let's go for the Admiral Bimbo. So, is the, is the owner of the Admiral Bimbo on the stream? I don't know. Um, I need to. Um, um, I need to watch Treasure Planet, so that's, that sounds quite interesting. I, I, mean, I love the book. I mean, it's actually, strictly speaking, Treasure Island is a children's book, but it's it's pretty well written for the time. And I wouldn't, I don't know how many children would read something like that nowadays, but um, so Treasure Planet is a pretty fun variation on the original good Disney version, but fun. Okay, well, that sounds like I might have to dig that out then. Um, Sounds like it's sort of a set in space version of Treasure Island, which actually <laughs> sounds quite good. Um, is it sort of is it sort of sailing ships in space though, which which I always thought was a bit odd. Um, you know, it, it's a bit of a weird one, isn't it? Sailing ships in space. Um, oh, it's a glitch. Mine keeps resetting to different characters. That's, okay, so that's a glitch as well. So I can, I can see I don't remember having uh, a way to change targets like that. So maybe that's a um, like I say a bit of a bug. Anyway, so here we are at the Admiral Bembo Inn, which is very very cool. Um, Ah, uh, Bartaz says he's listening to the stream, but he's in VR. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, I received a level one hype train emote. Thank you very much. <laughs> I don't know what to do with that, but that's very cool. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, right, so here we are at the Admiral Bembo. So fantastic literary reference again. There we go. So let's park up here. Um, again, another book worth reading if you haven't read it. Uh, buy me a pint at the Admiral Bembo Inn. So this is a, this is a good literary connection. I do like it. Um, so yeah, so um, again, lovely to see so many fleet carriers out here. I was um, Commander J. Um, um, I almost got a lift here actually in a fleet carrier for the last 500 light years anyway. Um, I was invited to land on, I can't remember which, which one it was now, it, during the week when I was flying out here. And um, oh, there's that, so that's, let's sidle across there for a nice screening actually. With the, with the anything uh, there we go we've got the we've got the nebula in the background then that's quite cool and the star that's pretty nice there we go that looks very science fiction -y. um yeah so i almost got lift in the fleet carrier on the way out here but i missed <laughs> managing to dock by about 30 seconds and it took off without me so i watched it go <laughs> i have now seen the fleet carriers arrive and go several times which is which is good um so so yeah so um multiple fleet carriers with with literary connections, I think this is, this is this is quite good given where we are in space. Um, now, um, why this system? Okay, why this system? Now, this system is important for the law because this is where um, players. Um, one of the early points at which players started influencing the law. Now, uh, we've got to step out to, to understand the significance of this. We've got to step out of the law a moment. Go to the meta law. Okay, which is which is my name for, for what happens when I was trying to write some of the law in the game and I was trying to juggle other things in real life in order to make it happen. So, as you know, I wrote two Elite Dangerous books. Okay, two Elite Dangerous books. The first one was Reclamation and the, the second one was Premonition. Um, 
So um, what basically happened is when I got to the end of Reclamation, I said to Frontier, look, I'd really be excited to write a second book. Yeah, let me know if that's a possibility. And there was kind of like, yeah, 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 yeah we're, we're up for that. We'll do that, we'll do that, do that. And so the three months went past uh, as I was finalizing the book. And, and I kind of, oh, so are we good for a second book? And it was kind of, mm, not sure. Um, and then the more I asked, the less answers I got. Uh, and so when I was getting to the end of writing Reclamation, I thought to myself, there's a very high probability. Um, <laughs> Frank Meyer, very good. <laughs> um, there's a high probability here that the second book isn't going to happen. So I can't leave the first book in a place that is just hanging. You know, that's, that's going to be a that's going to be a bad book. So if if the if the promised or potentially promised second book never materializes. Um, I can't leave the readers and the players with an unresolved situation. So I was umming and ahhing about this and trying to get, trying to pin Frontier down as to whether they would let me write a second book. And they were being very nebulous because they were busy, um, which, is, which is sort of what happens to them on occasions. Um, and I was thinking to myself, okay, well, I've, I've got to leave myself a thread open. So if I go for a second book, then we can go there. But if there's not going to be a second book, I've got to close the book down in a fashion. So hence the story of Salome and Hassan and Dolk and all the rest of it. So no spoilers as to exactly what happens. But at the end of the reclamation, you'll notice that the story sort of does end to a degree. And then there's this sort of little bit at the end where a possibility of the future is included, which was always in the draft. And I left it in there thinking, well, I can open that back out if it becomes a possibility. But if it doesn't, it just sort of leaves the book going and they headed off into the sunset, OK, looking for weird stuff in the galaxy. OK, um, and so I did that and the book was published and you know people picked up on the clues eventually um, and they started looking for, for the various things like the real Ridgecrat line and the heart and soul nebula and various other bits and pieces. So that was that sort of happened. And so I said to Frontier, so is the second book going to happen? And, Time went on. <laughs> Time continued to pass. Um, you know those old adventure games when you don't do anything and it comes up on the screen. Time passed. <laughs> just waiting for your input. It was a bit like that. Um, um, let's, let's, go, let's go outside. Lots of ships about here. There we go. Uh, exit camera. There we go. Oh, I still can't get this wretched thing. I don't know why that's... Maybe I should just delist my controls. It's, it's definitely the pots, isn't it? Like somebody was saying. There we go. Oh well. Um, zoom out. There we go. Near the fleet carrier. Um, so I was trying to make sure that the narrative that I'd kind of come up with still made sense. Okay. And unfortunately, that second book um, started and stopped a number of times with 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 permission. Sometimes it was on, and then a few months later it was off again, and then a few months later it was back on, and then we'd have a talk about it, and then it went off again. So it was a bit frustrating, to be frank. <laughs> I never knew where I was going to actually be able to do it or not. And and so when it be actually did become a possibility to do it, and we actually signed a contract for it, and it's like, it's going to happen now, then I was able to re-energize the story. So what you'll have noticed, if, you, if you've been a scholar of Galnet um, in the interview New Times, you'll notice that the Salome story went along for a while and then appeared to abruptly stop for several months. Um, and in that period of time was when me, I was basically trying to piss the frontier to say, are we doing the second book or not? Um, because all the time that wasn't um, solidified, there was no point in me putting any further Galnet articles because it was just going to, you know, it wasn't going anywhere. So um, that, that, was, that was an issue. So um, in the period of time between this, the first book and the second book coming out, um, Salome went into hiding, okay? Um, Salome went into hiding. And during that time, one of the player factions in the game approached me and said, it, you know, if the second book isn't going to happen, which it didn't look likely at the time, um, could, we, could we adopt Salome? Would, would she, as a character, consider joining a player faction? And I thought about this thinking, well, She's not going to be part of power play, which is the, one of the new features um, that was coming out at the time. And I thought, well, that, well that, that's all right. That's quite cool. I don't mind. Who are you, uh, what are you guys trying to do? Um, you know, what plans have you got? And all that kind of good stuff. 
and um, I got in contact with them. We went we on Discord, we had a few chats, and we exchanged emails and so on and so forth. And they were they were explorers trying to search out the mysteries of space, which is you know, which is cool. Um, and um, you know, I tried. Uh, I thought that well, that matches up quite, um, quite, uh, quite, um, you yeah, quite well. Um, oh, it looks like the chat we're having a bunch of frame drops. There, yeah, that's not good. I don't know what I can do about that, guys. Um, I'm getting a bunch of frame drops. No, not good. I'm, I'm not showing any particular issues here. It may be, it may be Twitch. Uh, I'm not sure about that, uh, which is a bit of a... It is recording, so do bear with me. Hopefully it will either get better or not. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. It is recorded to my local machine, so we can pick it up on YouTube afterwards. Uh, but it does look like it's a bit... Um, a bit a bit congested which is a bit of a shame so um it's um we'll we'll, we'll, we'll have to sort of persevere uh how it, how it goes um uh, audio is fine video is horrendous <laughs> dear um somebody in my band uh, how many of my family are using a lot of bandwidth um let me check uh whether i've got any local internet problems it's not it's not telling me any let me just see if my local machine is giving me any issues could be my son is downloading something on Steam. Although I must admit, did I? I did activate Steam. Maybe I. Maybe that was a. Maybe that's my fault. Um, sometimes Steam goes ahead and it updates things, doesn't it? Let me just double check. Okay, now my upload download is looking fairly quiet at this end, so it's not that I'm afraid. So something between me and you guys is is causing me the glitches. Um, I have closed the other space app. No, all the other space apps are closed. The only things I'm running are Elite and, and, and Streamlabs at the moment. Um, <laughs> maybe it's Elite, who knows? I mean, it, it's, Elite seems to be working fine to me. I'm not having any problems with the actual game. Um, but there we go, never mind. So um, it may just be one of those, I don't know. <laughs> We'll have to wait and see. Uh, hopefully it clears up, but it is being recorded so you can catch up on to. So um, anyway, so back to Salome. So Salome had kind of gone missing. Um, I couldn't pick up the story because I wasn't sure there was going to be another book. And so in the interim, when it all went quiet with Frontier, I was talking with um, you know some player factions about, you know, thing, and they basically said, would Salome potentially join us as, a, as, as her leader? So I wrote them some um, effectively fan fiction to kind of allow Salome to leave what she was doing and become this sort of exp this um, explorer. Now that was quite cool um, and um, that faction that faction was um, the children of Raxler which you may have heard of they're quite controversial now in Elite but originally they were um, they were um, they were just a band of explorers Okay, they were just a band of explorers, and I wrote them some kind of fan fiction out of out of official law law, if that makes sense, for Salome and and how she came across them and what her relationship with the children of Rexler was, um, and that that ran for a couple of months, about three months, and then Frontier rang me up and said, right, we're doing the second book, right, can you start? We want, we want this, we want this, we want this, and this. Oh, and by the way, come up to the front of your offices and we want to tell you how it's going to work out. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but suddenly stuff unblocked and started moving. Now, at that point, of course, Salome now has some history with in-game player factions. So I had to sort of start incorporating these things together, which is why the Children of Rackler feature in Premonition and why some of the other player groups that they're associated with, like Lorenz Legion and various other ones across there, are all in the second book because partly the book was about player factions anyway. That was a big part of what it was about. Um, but Salome had associated herself with them um, and some of the clues um, around there. Now, given that, and basically I told the children of Rax that Salome is going to be doing things for the entire player base now, not just for you guys. And I can't give you preferential treatment because that would be unfair. Um, but given that, you know, Salome is also a leader, so stuff is going to happen to her and you're going to be involved. So kind of make sure you're in the game at certain times because stuff is going to go down, okay? <laughs> so they knew things were about, but they didn't know what they were going to be. So they had no advanced knowledge of the events, but they did know that stuff was going to happen, which of course everybody really did. Um, but 
they did know that Salome's mission really was to unlock whatever was going on in the Formidine Rift because that's where the clues had sent her, that's where all the, the stuff was going on and that's where all the original clues were lining up with. So the mystery of the Formidine Rift was Salome's thing to unlock uh, with, with the help of the player base. Um, and what basically transpired is the children of Raxler organised an expedition, one of the early uh, uh, um, expeditions, and lots of other people came out here as well, but um, the children of Raxler organised an expedition out to the Formula Nine Rift that was referenced on Galnet. Okay? And because it was referenced on Galnet, it ended up in the game as a locale. And we're going to go and visit that now, because that's important to the story. So, on your... On your communications panel, uh, if I get back in my ship, you will notice over here that we have a, where is it? Uh, there we go. Children of Raxler staging post as, as a POI. Okay, so log on that. Uh, and we're going to go visit that. Okay, so it says there, Children of Raxler staging post, a tourist beacon, which is what it is. Okay. These are special locations that typically hold historical significance and are often sought out by explorers. In fact, you can get missions from the bubble out here, which will pay quite a lot of cash if you can get them. Um, so to find out more about exploration, check the pilot's handbook and link below. So that, let's go there, um, which is not too far away, and we're going to investigate what that looks like. Um, it's going to back away from this, this Imperial Courier, which is very, very close. A nice pink one with a body kit. Excellent. Um, so head for the children of Raxler staging post. Um, just I don't want to damage anybody's ship. I've already crashed into somebody's asp already. <laughs> so I don't want to do that again. Um, just boost with my fragile crates, yeah, <laughs> my D shields. Three D shields I think I've got on this thing. They're literally just there to stop me crashing into things. Um, so the children of Raxler staging post is a torch beacon in the system. And that's the reason we're here, because not only is the Heart and Soul Nebula the entrance to the Formidine Rift in the kind of head cannon that I've got, if you like, um, it's where the Children of Rexler met up. I think it was the year 3302. Um, a player faction, basically, they organised an expedition out here. And this was sort of pre-engineers and pre-Guardian tech, OK? So it was a bit more of an expedition back then. Um, uh, asps don't matter. <laughs> oh, I like the asp. Uh, oh, I've just shut down my frame shift drive. Um, and um, they came out here in you know the best ships of the time, which were mostly asps, to be fair, a few cobras and anacondas, um, to go and investigate the Formula 9 Rift. Okay, and um, this is where this is where they sort of met up to then do their their exploration. So this system was a hive of activity four years ago um, because you know a player faction who were in the law because of their association with Salome um, were looking for clues out in the form of the Rift and we can find a little bit more about that and I can't remember the oh, there's so many ships here I can't charge my frame shift drive up <laughs> come on come on full power frame shift drive. Too many ships. <laughs> oh, it's really crawling up. Look at that. I bought a condo so I wouldn't get the mass lock here. <laughs> My crate isn't, no isn't normally a problem. Um, oh, all pips to sisters. Does that help? Charge up the frame shift drive. Uh, yeah, somebody's locking me. It's slowly getting there. I'm going to try and get out of range. <laughs> oh, I mean, I've just been deliberately blocked. There's a, there's a lot of ships. <laughs> um, so here we go. I've finally got my frame shift drive to charge. There it goes. God, dear, that was the one that's the slowest <laughs> frame shift drive charge I think I've ever had. Um, all right, here we go, right. So, Children of Rexler staging post. So this is where the player faction um, sorted themselves out uh, and organised themselves for exploring the rift. And this became, therefore, the um, the um, 
you know, the, the entrance to the Formidine Rift. Yeah, so I was I was just boosting away. That's what I was trying to do. I think boost, 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 boost. That's the way to do, it, isn't it? Uh, so let's just drop out here. Now there's nothing particular here anymore. This is just the tourist beacon, but um, it marks, you know, it's a significant place in the exploration of the Formula Nine Rift, which of course is where we're going. Uh, we're about to enter it, even after two weeks of travelling. And I know we've not been going like super fast compared to the speed at which many of you will travel across the galaxy. But um, yeah, we've, I will, we'll, I'll work out how many light years we're out at the moment. We're, we're a fair old way out. Um, there we go. So we just throttle back. There's the actual staging post itself. And there we are, it's scanning it. So we'll get a little message in a moment. Woo, we're getting some rubber banding and weird stuff going on. Oh, look, and all the tourist ships are here as well, so that's going <laughs> to. That's going to screw things up because, of course, we've got all the NPCs here too. Um, so there we go. So the children wreck the staging post. So there we go. So in mid, here we go, mid 3302. Okay, the children of Rackler set up an outpost near the Heart and Soul Nebula in order to uh, support investigations into a mysterious area of space known as the Formidine Rift. Okay, so there we go. It is, uh, it is um, here now. Four four years ago that the children of Rackler started a th very thorough investigation of the Formidine Rift. This is where they started from. So they assembled here and then they went looking for stuff in the Rift. Um, so, um, so yeah, so we're retracing those footsteps, okay? So back in, if we look at the galaxy map, uh, we've come here because, uh, if we go back to the bubble, there we go. Uh, there's lots of people on their way out, as you can see. So this is this is where we were last week, and <laughs> there's a whole bunch of people on their way, which is quite cool. Who's this? Uh, Shaz Dingo, uh, Seth Iridan, uh, Commander Pearhead, Commander Proctor, and who's this? Commander Rush, and, and there's a few other people kind of on their way as well. Um, so if I go back to Sol, though, how far away is that now? <laughs> So we have come 7,474 light years, okay? So we are um, a long way, well, a reasonably long way out, okay? Not like crazy, crazy distance, but uh, if we look at the galactic map as a whole, um, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're a comparable distance. We're not quite a comparable distance to Colonia yet, but we're a reasonable distance out, okay? And this is our, our ultimate destination is out here, actually. Um, but I'm not going directly there. And some of you asked me about this. Um, why aren't we going directly to this, this sector? We, you know, A, it's nice to kind of spread things out a little bit. We've got three more weeks to go before this, this expedition ends, um, which, is, which is going to be a bit sad, actually. <laughs> I'm quite enjoying the expedition. But um, the reason we're not going directly is in the olden days, okay, four years ago, you know, in, the, in, the, in the ancient mists of time, long, long way back in the history of Elite Dangerous, Back then, you couldn't go straight there, okay? You couldn't go straight there. There were no, um, there was no engineering, okay? There was no frame shift drive booster. There was no neutron O supercharge, and there was no uh, white dwarf um, supercharge to your frame shift drive. You couldn't do any of that, okay? So the jump ranges were much, much lower. Okay, by by today's standards, you know, technology, you know, in the law has moved on, and we've got all these new capabilities. Okay, so back then, you know, a jump range of thirty to forty light years was was top end. Okay, nowadays it's strictly average, but back then that was top end jump range um, for for the ships. Okay, pre engineering, pre um, FSDs, and those sort of things. Oh, and jumponium and those sort of things. Okay, the synthesis and all that sort of stuff. Um, so all of those things are since that time. Okay, so it's much, much easier to get out there now than it was even back then. Um, and in the law, prior to the invention of the frame shift drive itself, getting out here was was an expedition of years, okay, in the law. Okay, so prior to the beginning of Elite Dangerous, um, uh, you know, it was really, really hard to travel this far because um, if, if you look at the, 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 the immediate predecessor game, Frontier, um, uh, first encounters, Elite Three, if you like. Um, it, um, you know, the jump ranges there were not as high, and 
ships would break down and it wasn't easy to repair them okay and it would take you weeks and weeks and weeks to do each hyperspace jump in the law okay so to get out to where we are today i mean you can do it in a few hours in elite dangerous in the, with a frame shift drive in the previous game law that would have taken you weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and possibly even months and years depending on your ship okay so um, the frame shift drive revolutionizes this but even at the beginning of elite dangerous this is this is the year 3302 we're talking about when this was all going down a jump range of 30 plus light years was top end okay that was the best you could do and you can't go from here to there with a 30 light year jump range. There's no way across, okay? So this was a rift in space, hence the name, the Formidine Rift. Um, you couldn't go there, okay? To get across to here, uh, as you can see, the star density in this region here is very, very low. You're trying to get from a spiral arm here where there's loads and loads of stars, okay? It's dead easy, all right? Once you get past the heart and soul nebula, look at the, look what happens. Uh, I can't get that wretched box out of the way there we go um, um, the star density drops dramatically when you're out here okay it drops really really fast okay so you can see the heart and soul nebula there on the edge of the spiral arm deliberately kind of a, a, a cool place to have it um, but the star density rapidly rapidly disappears okay um, uh, in, in this zone to the point at which over here it's okay, and then it drops off really, really quickly as you get past the Hansel Nebula. And as you try and head out in this direction, you ran into the fact you couldn't navigate, okay? The rift was, it seemed, impassable. Um, there's no way to get across. And the clues were telling you, you need to go out here, somewhere, into this sector. Um, but there's, there's, no, there's no way to get there. Um, so, um, players began exploring and they, they got so far and then found you know, there's no way to root plot. We can't jump that. But how do we get there? Um, so that that was a problem. Um, and there are other ways across. Okay. And we will be taking the route that the original explorers of the Formidine Rift used when they crossed the rift. So we're not going to go directly there because you can go directly there now. If you, if you wish to shortcut the expedition, you can go... Um, um, across here and um, you know you can go direct there with with the modern ships with the jump home and so on and so forth but that's kind of not in the spirit of the original expedition so I'm trying to retrace the footsteps of the original explorers we have to take a detour to do it we have to yeah, go all the way around uh, no it's not that bad <laughs> yeah you have to go in fact what you have to do is you have to go to Sagittarius A <laughs> uh, Far Colonia out to uh, what was it Beagle Point uh, and they're around the edge and back across. That's the only way to do it. Um, and also, yeah, so in those days, nowadays, you can root plot all the way back to the bubble from here. Okay, you can, I think you can root plot, is it 10,000 light years? I think I can do that if I do a soul, if I do a search for soul, um, okay, and click on the hyperspace root plot. Look at that, it works it out, okay? It can plot me a route from where we are right the way back to soul in a few seconds. Right? You could not do that in the early days of Elite Dangerous. It, it, it wasn't possible. Um, yes, yeah, so it's 20k light years now, which is which is jolly convenient, but it's also a bit of a shame because it takes some of the mystery out of the game. So back when, they ex went, back when, the, um, back when this was being done, um, you could plot 1,000 light years at a time, okay? It was 1,000 light years, or maybe even met less than that, I can't remember what it was now, but it wasn't very much, which meant that you could only plot forward a little bit, and then you'd have to replot and then sort of see how you were doing. Plus, your jump range was much, much lower. Um, and if you went the wrong way, or you went down a sort of tangent, let's say down here a little bit, trying to find a way across, um, you might come to a dead end, in which case you'd have to retrace your steps back trying to find another route. So this really was exploration. You can't just click on the thing. Now, if I click on where we're ultimately going to go, um, I don't know whether the system will be able to route plot it for me. Let's see if it can. Um, see? No, it can't. Okay, so that's interesting. Okay. It can't, it still can't quite do it. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's, oh, it's thinking about it again. Is it trying again? No, it's root plotting fails. It can't. It hasn't been able to figure it out directly. So there's a little, there's still a little bit of a challenge in there. But um, 
Um, looks like there's a fight going on. What's going on here? <laughs> um, I don't know if that's the NPCs having a fight. Um, hopefully they don't shoot me. Um, pirates were attacking Drew. Oh, there they are, were they? <laughs> so yeah, so, um, but nowadays it's much, much easier. Okay, much, much easier, which is kind of cool, but it's sort of taking some of the mystery out of the harder to reach places. Okay, there are places that, you know, the Formidine Rift now isn't really a challenge. Okay, are there pirates? Are there pirates about? Do I need to do something? Um, <laughs> I'm gonna keep an eye. Um, is, it, is it NPCs? Um, NPC pirates class. I can't believe the NPCs are trying to sabotage my law tour. <laughs> <laughs> Fab. Um, so, um, so yeah, so it was much more of a challenge. Okay, thank you very much, guys, for guarding me. I do appreciate that. That's awesome. Against the scourge of NPC terrorism. Um, but back then, there were no known routes across to here. Okay, so the explorers, the first explorers going to the former line rift had to find ways across and they did eventually find one. Now, some of you won't be aware of this because again, it's sort of faded a little bit into the obscurity of elite myth and lore, but I do want to give, um, I do want to give the original people some kudos for this because long before the galaxy was mapped in the way you see on the screen now with this zone, it's very nice that the former line rift is officially recognized in the, in the map. And if we look at the codex, um, if we look in the codex, you'll see that we've got the entire galaxy has now got sectors in it, okay, and they're all named. Um, you know, they've got some funky names and da 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 da. Okay, so we have here the former Dine Rift area, which isn't actually quite right, but it's almost right. Um, and um, you know, the errant marches, and we have other things that made it in. You know, there's the um, where's the uh, uh, normal expanse, Hawking's Gap. And we've got the, where is it? There's the conflux. So these are places that were mentioned in the law that I was talking about. And there are lots of others besides them as well. Um, now, originally, before this was a thing, because the Codex hasn't been in Elite Dangerous since the beginning, okay? It was a relatively late addition to the game. Um, so all this sort of stuff here wasn't there in the original Elite game. The route plotting wasn't there. Um, the hyperspace jump range wasn't there. And all that sort of stuff, you know, has come since. Now, back in the day, let me see if I can find it. The um, uh, Elite Dangerous. There we go. Okay. Back in the day, um, and EDSM has still got it, which is which is nice. Let's see if I can find the actual map itself. There we go. Okay. So this here is the original fan-made Elite Dangerous map. Okay, now the names on this, some of them were adopted. Okay, some of them were adopted by Frontier, which was which was nice a way of recognizing what the fans had done. Okay, but the map is different in many respects. Okay, so what you'll notice is that we have, um, the Formidine Rift is mapped. Okay, that's, we knew where it was, okay. Um, the Orion Spur has named, you can see here, Hawking's Gap um, was named by players. Um, and we have the the Conflux region here as well. The Norma Arm, um, Tenebris. Some of these names have survived and made it onto the official frontier map of the galaxy. Not all of them have. But this was the map that the explorers were using at the time, okay? So we basically forced them to. Yeah, there was a bit of a petition going on, lots of protest goats and things, okay? So um, initially they didn't. Um, so uh, we did have to encourage, shall we say, Frontier to adopt some of the fan stuff. Um, and they didn't have to, it's their game and so on and so forth. Yeah, they did, yeah, quite right, Blade. Um, they um, just initially planned to number them and we all kind of went on the forums and waved our, waved our virtual sticks at them. Um, but this this beautiful map, and I've I've actually got a copy of this. Um, I'll take I'll take a picture of it and tweet it um, online tomorrow. But I've actually got a map of this um, that the children of Raxler printed for me. A massive, it's about a meter square. It's huge, and it's on the it's on the wall of my um, um, my hall downstairs. Um, and they printed me a beautiful um, 
copy of this. Um, and but the, the, you know, the, the, there's lots of poetry and lots of association with the names of this. People would plan expeditions to the Formula One Rift, amongst other places, based on the fact that this map told them where to go. So this is, if you like, the original, original map of Elite Dangerous. But it's not quite the same as the one that exists in the game today. But I still think it's, in some ways, it's, it's far more poetic, okay? It's also produced by the fans and the players of the game. So it has a bit, to me, it has all those elements of, of collaboration. This map represents thousands and thousands and thousands of player hours worth of dedication and mapping, okay, to, to to go out there and find out what's out there and then and, and, and do various other bits and pieces. So um, it was disappointing initially that Frontier weren't going to adopt it, but at least we got some of this content into the official map. Now, um, they were very kind, so and this this one definitely hasn't appeared on the official map for reasons which are fairly straightforward to understand. Um, over here, I've, I'm, I was particularly honoured because there's a, there's a small stretch of the galaxy over here. Well, it's actually a massive stretch; it's several thousand light years long. But um, there's a small bit of the galaxy over here called Wager's Reach, <laughs> which I've been to once. So Wager has reached Wager's Reach <laughs> once. <laughs> And my reach is in my reserve. So I was, I was very touched when the community basically said to me, we've named a small bit of the galaxy up here. Thank you very much, guys. I do appreciate that. Um, it's, it's alas, it's not an official, official part of the galaxy. Um, but those who have an exploration bent do tend to, um, to, to tend to call that little bit of space where guys reach anyway. And there's a couple of wacky nebulas and strange stars out there, which are, which are quite cool. Uh, but it's a long way away, okay? So if you do ever go out to that area of, expense, that, you know, that area of space, then, then, then thanks. <laughs> um, looking at the official map, I have to have a look actually what, what's actually, there's a little gap actually, because um, as you can see, there's a small gap there between the outer arm rift um, and Wager's Reach is kind of just beyond it. So uh, if you ever do go out there, then that's cool. So that, that's quite nice. But this map is a beautiful thing that the players use. And in the, in the days before the official map in the game, um, this is what we were using. And there is the Formidine Rift, okay? That is the Formidine Rift as it was originally envisaged. Um, and we've got lovely things like the Wayfarer's Graveyard and, you know, <laughs> and stuff like that. So very, very cool fan contributions to the game lore. Um, and it took a bit of encouragement to get Frontier to recognise it, but um, at least some of it anyway. So the map that we have in the game today, as a result, is not, as you can say, is not quite the same. Um, and I was one of those, basically, that did petition Frontier to say, Oi, what do you think you're doing numbering it from 1 to 42? Let's have some more imagination in. You know, people have done some work on this. So you can see the Formula Line Rift exists. The Hawking's Gap exists. The Conflux is, is not quite in the same place. Where you guys reach, if it was anywhere, was, was over here somewhere. It's just called the Void now. <laughs> I think it's okay. Um, so, um, and then, but you know, Outer Scutum Centaurus Arm is a bit dull. Come on, let's have some nice names. The Abyss, that's nice. Um, and Tenebrae was in the, uh, was in the, was in the fan map and so on and so forth. So, um, so there we go. Um, Hence the you know the way that the map works today. So all of those things, if we're going to retrace this expedition, we need to do it the way it was done. Okay. So whilst I've encouraged you to have a slightly higher jump range than ships back then did, just really for your own convenience, so you don't get stuck, um, you don't need to have more than about thirty-two light years to do this. But it's hard at thirty-two light years. Okay. You're going to be a lot of backtracking if you don't know where you're going. Um, so we're going to follow the route that the explorers eventually found a cross um, and they nicknamed it. So let me show you on the galaxy map again. They nicknamed, we'll, we'll move away from the staging post in a minute because the NPCs are going to cause us some problems. Um, and um, here, basically, what the players discovered is that you have to take, in all, you can't go across here, at least not with those original jump ranges, okay? You had to take a detour. You had to take a detour over here, this direction, and eventually there was enough star density to cut back across. And that was nicknamed the Heisenberg Bridge by the original Formidine Rift Explorers. So all this area was sort of mapped and charted and people were finding ways across and then comparing notes and storing information and all that sort of stuff. Um, so uh, why, did, why did they come up with their own names? Well, Front Frontier has a funny relationship <laughs> with its fans. <laughs> some of the time they're really enthused by their antics and some of the times they turn a complete blind eye to them and I don't know. Uh, 
Um, maybe there's technical limitations in it as well. There's only so many you can have. I don't know what the constructs are, but um, you know, given that the galactic mapping expedition had been done, it was in the law as well, kind of. Um, why they couldn't just adapt the names that were there because those are the names that everybody was using, and then of course we had to relearn all the names because now they were different. So, hey. Um, uh, who knows? But um, Frontier haven't always been receptive to the fan base content. Sometimes they are very receptive to it, and sometimes they they don't like to adopt it. And reasons uh, that <laughs> it's impossible to predict. Um, but if we're going to do the expedition, we're going to do it the right way. So that's one of the things I wanted to do with the way we're going. So uh, let me just pop this over here because where we're going to go next, uh, just so you know. Uh, is along the edge of the arm, okay? We're going to go along the edge of the arm. Uh, and there's a... Uh, actually, no, we're not... Sorry, we're not going along the edge of the arm yet. We've got to go somewhere else first. Um, we're going to be going to a system here. Not too far away, actually. It's still in the same sector. Um, U-R C4-1 we're going to go here next, okay? Which is a little way in to the Formidine Rift. And you'll notice the jump starts getting harder. So it's not too far away from well. We can we can go there within um, you know a, a, a few jumps. It's not too far away. It's only 800 and something like this. So for most of us it's not too far away. That's where we're going to go for next week. And we're going to go there for very very important reasons because some stuff starts to get unlocked within the Formidine Rift. Some of the mysteries that start to unfold. Um, but from there, we are going to I've just <laughs> stupidly closed down the browser window. Uh, pay attention, man. Pay attention. But from there, we're going to detour across to this system, uh, which has the amazing name. Oops, why is that not typing? Um, Okay, we're gonna have, we're detouring across to here before we drop down towards the um, the ultimate destination. We're going to take it across here because this is the route that the original explorers used. In fact, I'm going to bookmark that because um, uh, no, not I don't delete that one. I want that one. Go back there. Um, here we are. Bookmark that location. There we go. So that's where we're going to be going the week after next. Um, so we can pick up the Heisenberg Bridge, which runs from here across to our ultimate destination, which is in the Cyrady sector. Um, so yeah, so but for carriers, of course, could do 500 light years in one go now. So <laughs> it's just way too easy. Um, but we're we're we're, re we're reenacting an, an historic, well, there's now an historic um, quest. Okay, so um, yeah, that's that's an, that's an important thing the, to do it correctly in the way it was done. But uh, you know, I have advised bring a, a slightly better jump range so you don't get stuck. Um, so given that, um, let's let's take a another look at our wonderful collection of fleet carriers. We are we've been to the Admiral Bembo. Um, this one down here looks like the Nightwish seems to be on its own. So I like I like the loners. So let's go out and see the CRV Nightwish, um, and we'll get away from the NPCs for a bit. Try not to bump anybody's ship on the way out. There we go. And boost. <laughs> so I do like a, I, I like a little bit of tour of the fleet carriers. So will I be visiting the surface site? So yes. Um, so next week we are going to be rendezvousing at the, the the next system is about 800 light years away from here. It is one of the um, the surface sites that we want to go and visit. And um, we will be investigating the Alpha Base, um, and we'll, we'll talk about that next week, so that we can um, we can go into that bit of the story as well, and the beacons that were um, were associated with that. But that's that's next week's um, that next week episode of the Formidite Rift. Um, so we're poised here, basically at the entrance to the Rift area between the, the Heart and Soul Nebula. This is where the clues had led the players back in 3302. Um, oh, the night wish is quite a long way off. There we go. All right, let's head over there. Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, so we'll, we'll jump in on that um, thing. So, um, thank you. And by the way, thank you to all of the um, 
um, the, you know, the players who have brought along their free carriers. I, you know, I appreciate how much time and effort and tritium is expended in moving these ships around. So um, thank you very much for doing that. So uh, I've enjoyed seeing them come along for the ride as well. It's nice to see them out this far, actually, because, of course, they're big, expensive things to operate. So I do appreciate that. Thank you very much to all the players who brought those along. And obviously just thanks to you guys in general for all the ships that you've brought along here and brought out. Um, it's, it's great to have company out in the void, OK? Great to have company out in the void. Um, so, uh, and revisit actually this mystery that I put in the game. Well, it's it's six years ago now. Um, um, so, you know, before when it was originally placed in, and and, and years now since it was it's completed. But it's nice to kind of go back and visit it. Uh, it it's, it's quite good fun. Um, so, I'm just looking for. Uh, yeah, there we go, band settlements. So we'll look at those next week. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me just look. For, I'm just looking for a file. Almost there. Not sure where that is. Never mind. Closing in on the site, the uh, the Nightwish, the CRV Nightwish. So yeah, so nowadays a fifty light year jump plus ship um, um, would have no difficulty reaching the final destination directly. You can just pretty much go straight there. Um, uh, other than the the route plotter not quite playing ball uh, until you get a little bit closer, but you can do it in stages, and eventually we'll figure it out. Uh, whereas back then it was it was it was hard to do. Okay, really hard to do. So um, you know, so kudos to the players who got out here um, to try and look around because a it took them, you know, two or three times as long to actually get out here than in terms of the number of jumps that you had to do. Plus, bear in mind that their exploration ships were not as advanced as the ones we have now, so there were um, a lot more limitations to what you could and couldn't repair. Um, um, you know, using your onboard mechanics um, compared to compared to now, we didn't have all the. Um, in fact, it, in the early days, we didn't even have wings. Okay, so you couldn't guarantee meeting up with anybody at all, um, <laughs> and we didn't have you know we, we didn't have limpets, and we didn't have um, all of the you know the repair options of various other bits and pieces that we had. Now we had fuel scoops, but we did, and we had AFMUs, but we didn't have the some of the ships that we have now. Um, so the, the Crate Phantom, for example, wasn't around then. We had the Asp and the Anaconda, and that was about it for the exploration for really long range. Um, so not only did those original explorers take longer to get out here, they had a harder time doing it. Um, there was no support other than really going back to uh, the base. Um, the asteroid base, yeah, the Farseer's one is... Oh, we should, we should pop in there, actually. Um, yeah, it's a bit, it is a bit back in my day, it would all this with fields. Sorry about that, yeah, I'm doing, doing a bit of an old codger thing going on there. Um, but it, it was harder, okay, it was harder. So kudos to the original explorers who did come out here, uh, because it was a harder thing to do, okay, it was a harder thing to do back then than it is now. Um, and that, you know the Formidine Rift expedition can be you know you can get out there and back in probably in days worth of playing you know seven hours whatever it happens to be uh, without too much difficulty. Um, whereas back then it was much much harder. And of course back then of course we didn't know where we were going. Um, so um, those were all all things that had to kind of be had to be walked out. So this is the CRV night, which this is the furthest fleet carrier out from the star, which is nice. With a nice planet in the background. So there we go. Let's back off. I don't need to actually. Well, I'll tell you what, I might. Um, do I need to dock? I don't think I need to dock. I think I've damaged my ship. Is my ship in good health? I don't think I've busted it. You know, I've, yeah, I've, I've repaired it already. Um, so that's cool. Um, Annoying, spinny. That's not too bad. There we go. Anyway, see if you can see if you can rendezvous with me there at the night wish. That's quite cool. 
Um, so there are, um, there's one that's Sol Nebula 2. Ah, ZX Spec is here as well. The asteroid base is Far Seer's Expedition. Okay. Uh, across the void and wooden sailing ships, yeah. Um, um, we moved down <laughs> too many NPC parts. Um, I came back out this way last year before Beyond. I realised I had never visited Zuara despite being a rifter who followed the mystery to the end. They ended up meeting another commander in the system and told them about the surface bases they had missed on the way out. So yeah, so we'll go and look at the surface bases as well because they would give us a clue as to what was going on. Okay. Um, so, um, so yeah, so there was, there was lots of stuff like that. Um, it was it was much tougher back then. So you know, pioneers of exploration, the children of Rackla and Legion, the Rifters themselves. Um, I think that's where the phrase "threadnought," which came from the forums, actually kind of originated, because there was this massive long Formidine rift thread where people were trying to work things out. Um, and it wasn't always easy because actually the game sometimes conspired against me as well. So, um, and we also had the conundrum again back into the meta law, um, the conundrum of as the game progressed. Should we alter some of the story? Now, I was kind of a little bit worried about that, but I took a sort of executive decision to say, actually, yes, let's enhance the story as we go along because players haven't discovered all of the original stuff yet, so they won't know, um, and we can take advantage of the new cool tech that is coming out in the game um, so that the end result of the format on Rift is actually a bit more interesting than otherwise. Um, so, you know, th things like that happened in, in there as well. There's, there's a lot of, lot of mix-ups. So trying to actually work out precisely what happened in what order is actually really quite difficult now uh, because it was, things changed along the way as well. But it was it was always aimed to be an interesting diversion for the explorers of Elite Dangerous. So if you weren't into combat and you weren't into trading and you weren't into mining, but you liked going out and solving mysteries and doing exploration and stuff, there were, there were two things that were happening, okay? Um, one was the sort of Formidine Rift thread, which was way off in the depths of space, and the other one was the predecessor to the Thargoid stuff, which was all about these strange um, uh, artifacts that kept being found in space that would sing and, and make strange noises and, and react when you, you did things to them. So there, was, there, were, there, were, there were things happening that the explorers could kind of get involved in, and that was, that was really something to try and keep the explorers busy in the game. Um, and the exploration in this game is the thing that I like the most, because I'm, I'm, a, I'm a space nut and I like getting out there looking at stuff. <laughs> so that's that's kind of that's kind of my thing as well. So I like the exploration. And in the early days, Michael Brooks and I were sort of swapping ideas on how the um, how the exploration will work and what interesting things we could put in the game. And he went down a much more um, you know weird signals and artifacts kind of route. Um, and you'll notice that Michael Brooks' hand and things like the um, uh, what, what were revealed eventually to be the Thargoid artifacts that um, gave off strange noises and when you ran those noises through a signal analyzer, it was all a bit techy for me, um, um, you know, it would, it would generate a map or a code or you know, there would be little um, um, sequences of code that would do wireframe outlines of ships and all sorts of stuff like that. It was all very cool, um, a bit too, too clever for me. Um, and um, Michael Brooks was also experimenting with encryption codes and things like that that were put into the game. And those work quite well for a while, but then, then a group of players called Canon Research, which I'm sure you've heard of, um, became very adept at solving said clues very, very quickly because they were full of smart people, basically, and who had access to all sorts of clever technologies and stuff, um, who could decrypt encrypted things really, really fast. Um, and so it was a little bit of a brute force attempt, and then you know secrets would get revealed very, very quickly, and then everybody else had to sort of catch up, either by running around trying to find out where things were, or just watching it on YouTube after the event. Um, so the encryption tool, the thing was a was a was a busy six months, and then it sort of faded away. Now I took a look at the encryption stuff and thought, I don't really want to have clues in my game that require people to use out of well, kind of kind of out of game computer tools, that, that felt a little bit unfair to some of the players to me. Because um, some people had access to them, and some people just didn't know how they worked, so <laughs> it's like quite hard work. Um, you know, and having to run the sound artifacts through a signal analyzer to get a, get a map, it was, <laughs> it was quite a step beyond what I thought was, was possible. Um, you know, and, and figuring out star patterns from trailers, that was another thing that Canon were quite good at, and other people as well, you know. <laughs> it's like, that was, that's some serious dedication. Um, yeah, so tool for those who are curious, audio spectrum analyzer. So what you could do with some of the early clues in Elite Dangerous, um, some of the some of the things that you could discover gave off strange noises, 
and you could record that sound from your PC onto another piece of software called the Audio Spectrum Analyzer. And when you ran it, when you told it to basically print out the pattern of the sound uh, in the analysis, spectrum analysis mode, um, suddenly this diagram would appear, okay, in the sound. Um, so for those who knew how to do it, you could, you could, <laughs> it could sort of do things, the, the, you know, so th there was some quite cool stuff, but it was, it was a bit for a niche of certain players who had access to that sort of stuff. Um, and so, so that's, that stuff was a thing in these early days as well. Now I looked at that and thought, well, hey, I, I, that's not really me. I can't do those sort of things. So I wanted to um, give clues that were a little bit more kind of esoteric. So I stuck with astronomy and mythology-based clues, which is why everything that you'll find in mine has is, is got a kind of um, um, mythology feel to it. In fact, if you look, um, the initial clues were right from the beginning. If I go back into my ship for a moment, um, the initial clues that I put in, uh, <laughs> back in my days, I crossed the Alps with that guy named Hannibal. <laughs> you had barrels! <laughs> um, so if you look, if you go back to where Salome originally came from, which is the PRISM system, um, uh, there's no particular naming behind the PRISM system itself, other than I thought it sounded cool, um, but the stars in the PRISM system tell you a message. Okay, the stars in the prism system tell you a message. Um, you'll notice they have names. Okay, so Maestra, Daedalian, Keone, um, and some of these other ones. Oh, there's a fleet carrier there. There we go. Um, Niera, Euryclay, uh, Anticlay, etc., etc., etc. Now these are names from Greek mythology. Okay, now if you look up those names in Greek mythology, you will quickly figure out they're a family tree. But they're a family tree with some bits missing. And those bits are important, okay? They they were subtle clues for you to go and search for, well, okay, what's the missing bit? And where did that take me? And that gets you started, okay? So there were bits and pieces of the Formaline Rift mystery that worked that way as well. So I left them in the game like that, you know, just to kind of pique your interest and see if you could figure it out. And all the, all of my clues in the Formaline Rift mystery were generally... Um, if, if I did use encryption, they were simple, but they were encryption that gave you basically, when you decrypted it, you didn't get the answer, you got another clue. <laughs> uh, and you tended to get a piece of mythology clue, okay? So it's like, okay, you'd get another piece of that unlocked. You know, well, what do I do with that now? I've got this thing unlocked, I've decrypted it, but I don't know what it means, um, and so on and so forth. So it was, it was kind of leading on to di different places. So that's how that sort of stuff worked. Um, so, um, and, um, but not all of them worked. <laughs> Unfortunately, there were <laughs> there were some coding errors, and I hadn't realised that because um, I'd intended them to be when 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 uh, Frontier said, "Oh, they'll be in Galnet." I said, "Fantastic! Oh, they'll be in Galnet. That's great." Some of them were in Galnet, but Galnet had some issues in terms of the way it worked. Now I sort of assumed that Galnet was just a website that you went into and you typed some things in, and you kind of pressed upload, uh, but it doesn't seem to have been quite that straightforward. Um, and sometimes the Galnet articles would come in out of sync and sometimes they'd be edited um, without me knowing that they'd been edited, in which case the meaning of the clue got sort of screwed up and lost. So there were some problems with that and I had to go back and say, um, could you not edit that one please? Because actually that was a clue. <laughs> so I did have some quality control problems with that sort of stuff. So it didn't all go smoothly. It didn't all go smoothly, but we got there in the end. Um, so, um, yeah, so um, it was, so, you know, so people like different types of puzzles, okay? And the idea between me and Michael Brooks was we were trying to give as many different things for people to get their teeth into, um, um, you know, for, for fun and stuff. So um, that, you know, it was it was, it was it was fun stuff to do. Um, and the Formidine Rift, of course, was referenced in the original book that I'd written, uh, Elite Reclamation. So, uh, you know, it was fun stuff to kind of hook that into the rest of the story. Now, there was nothing in Reclamation that required you to buy the book or read the book. You, know, you could pick up the clue from in-game as well. But um, you know, if you wanted to sort of what, what they call what they used to call, um, um, I can't remember. Oh, it, had a, it had a really natty kind of funky phrase, and I can't remember what it was. Inter intertextuality or something, <laughs> dual textuality or something like that, where you have multiple different types of media referring to the same event. So it was it was an example of that. Okay, the book talked about it, the game talked about it, and you know the websites talked about it and all sort of stuff. 
So um, those sort of things. And the idea was for players to kind of, okay, there's some weird stuff going on in the lips of space. Out you go and go and investigate and see what you can do. Um, and it was, um, you know, it was tough back in the day with the lower jump ranges and difficult to get there and not knowing where you're going to go uh, and so on and so forth. So, um, so yeah, so there were audio things for you to, um, to figure out. Um, uh, and there we go. So Diff presents for our Thargoid overloads give a different sound. So there are still some Thargoid sounds which haven't been fully analysed. So if you fancy having a go at that, it's... Um, it's it's worth um, it's worth having to play around with that, um, and there were maps and the Thargoids generated weird weird diagrams of stuff and you know all those sort of things weren't necessarily um, worked out either. Um, so um, so <laughs> I swear I'll pick up reclamation one of these days. Well, you know, <laughs> well the, the funny thing is actually now it'll make a lot more sense as to what's going on because of course virtually all the mysteries associated with reclamation premonition are now completed in the game. This is this is an historic lore tour going back over that, um, and um, so you know you can you can go back and revisit it now with the fact that oh, I can I can go there I can be there I've I've been to those places that are referenced in this historical book, uh, so it's it's you know it's it's lore that has been it's 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 kind of gone now which is which is fun, um, um, and you're finishing Shable. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> do appreciate that. Shable is my science fiction series. Nothing to do with Elite, but it is. It's yeah. It's, it's by me. I'm quite proud of it. We finished it relatively recently, which is quite cool. Um, so, so there we go. So let's. I'm quite interested in this asteroid base while we're here because we're not going to go back to the Heart and Soul Nebula. Um, so let's let's have a look at this guy. Where is this? Where is this um, asteroid base? Let's let's hang out there. I want to go back there. Yeah. Let's go back to the bookmark. Uh, heart and soul. Mm, da, 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 da. Hmm. I've not got that bookmarked. Oh, I haven't. I've just called it something. Oh, that says Guardian site. I can click on Guardian site. Mm. Yeah, we're there. That's where I want to be. No, I wasn't the right place. Having a brain fade. Uh, so some people are already out there. Okay, so there we go. So some people are hanging around out there. So there are, okay, so there's a base out here, is there. So how do I, is that the heart sector? Is that something, no? There's no population there though. So how do I screen it to see the filters map? Okay, let's do it by population. Da, 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 da. Civilization, that will do. Economy. Okay, so there's no economy. There we go, there's a star there, that must be it. Okay. Okay, so there's an extraction of comms. Let's let's pop over there because I think just out of interest while we're here, let's see the see the asteroid. Um so um oh there we are, someone's already typed in. I R V B I see I looked it worked it out myself. Yeah, the Polaris signal isn't going. So let's go to let's go to Farsight's base. Um, the base camp, we're not going there this week. We'll, we'll save that for next week. Um, so, um, yeah, you feel free to go out there if you wish to, but we're not going to go there on today's tour. That's going to be next week's tour. Um, so let's go to the heart sector. Because uh, I've, I've, I've got a little thing I've been working on, okay? And the yeah, far seal will be a good place to, to run it off. So let's go to the heart sector there. It's not very far away. For me, that's two jumps by the look of it. Um, so I think it's just two jumps. Yeah, literally two jumps just to get to there. So I'm just going to cautiously back away from my is that a cobra yay nice to see a cobra out here um and we will let's go to that sector there and we'll find uh, if that's felicity's base i didn't know there was one out here so um let's go there over to the heart sector itself i need to get away from the thick camera so rendezvous in the heart sector irv b2-1 and we'll we'll pop over there A bit of flying around. I've never even scanned the system. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Boom, off we go. Yeah, so we'll go to um, we'll go to the far side. I didn't know there was a far side base out here. So stuff has been built. You see, this is this is the problem with tourism. <laughs> Is when you first come out this way, there's nothing, you know, it's complete desolation. This is this is the back and beyond. Whereas 
you come out a few years later and there's like a there's a Starbucks <laughs> at a McDonald's restaurant and stuff it's not quite the out of the you know, it's not quite as uh, out of the wild west as it used to be um, and that's the kind of the format Unrift is a bit like that now um, it's not that it's it's sort of a bit um, it's a bit touristy actually for Elite Dangerous um, so it's <laughs> it's easy to get here now but um, you know it's still a place of, of, of what was great mystery in the game back in the day so from that perspective it's quite cool um, but you know there's, there's civilization out here now Starbucks yes you see what did there <laughs> Um, both places are within the Panish Ring. So these are quite cool, these Astro bases. Um, I like the way they've been done. And in fact, those were, those were new additions. They, these, they, those didn't exist in the game at the point either. So a lot of these things are new for that as well. Here we go. Let's just have a quick look at the system map. Where are we? We are on there's the actual base. There it is there. Okay, so it's around the fourth planet by the look of it. Farsight Expedition Base. So does that imply there was a Farsight Expedition? Presumably. Um, which is presumably Felicity Farsair. Now she was an explorer as well, of course. Oh, I can use the funky... The Devil's Call. Okay, so there's a few more fleet carriers out here as well, which is quite nice. Let's go to Farsight Expedition Base for further reasons. Um, uh, well, they had it in Westeros, didn't they? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that was really funny when they left the cup in the, sh in the shot. Um, quite good. Um, so, yeah, so this is basically where those, ex those those early explorers came with their primitive ships okay so this is this is the stuff of elite legend now the fact that, you know coming out here before this was all charted um oh, it's far seer isn't it so if this is far sight expedition base not far seer that's a good point actually um so is this related to felicity far seer or not i wonder i don't know to avoid IP infringement, Farsight has a cafe called Barstux. <laughs> um, ah, okay, hence why this region is known to the Raxler hunters due to her ties to the Dark Wheel mystery. Now, Raxler, of course, keeps coming back. I need to check out the um, Amiga link, and I'll, I'll do that offline. But, um, yeah, I had never intended for the Formidine Rift mystery and Raxler to be connected in any way, shape, or form, okay? The, the, there's a slight problem with the fact that the children of Raxler called themselves the children of Raxler, which of course confuses everything slightly, which makes searching for things a bit tricky because you can't exclude Raxler from the search, otherwise you exclude all the children of Raxler stuff from the former Dine River, which doesn't make sense. Um, so, but it, there was certainly no intention from me to conflate Raxler and the former Dine River. They were two separate mysteries and the, you know, the universe is big enough for lots of mysteries okay so um, and I had been told as a writer for Elite Dangerous don't you're not allowed to do racks the racks there is off limits which I thought was okay um, because you know that was somebody else's business and all the writers basically were told you know you're not doing racks the racks there is sort of reserved fine okay um, so there was no intention from me for the former Rift mystery and Rackler to be connected okay um, so that's not to say that Frontier hasn't or won't connect them, um, but um, you know that that is that is their decision, not mine. So I can't really help, okay, <laughs> uh, with that particular one. Um, I don't know if we can find anything about this Farsight Expedition Base. I don't like the way these are in the rings. A nice cup of coffee sounds quite nice at this point, actually. Um, so the rift was tied to the Thargo mystery. Yes, yeah, so it was deliberately tied to the Thargo mystery. That was really what the, that was about. Um, and not to Raxler. Now, I say Raxler hasn't gone on. Now, the only thing that somebody's pointed out is that the clues that I used with um, Cassiopeia and Andromeda, um, those were written by me long before the Codex was a thing, okay? So... Um, 
the fact that the codex picked up on those things as well may be a coincidence um, or maybe it isn't I don't know oh there's a listening post in this system is there okay well maybe we should go investigate that because um, this this you know the, the base is already well we've, we've seen asteroid bases before so um, and they, they're very nice I think they're one of the more atmospheric things in the game actually especially if you're going through through the inside um, they're nicely done I think we can probably thank Michael Brooks for that as well because that's a very cool a cool thing to see the asteroid base and they don't rotate which of course sort of makes sense really um, so there's a listening there's a listening post in the system is there okay the memorial yeah Maybe that tells us who who he is or who they were. Memorial for a fluck. <laughs> Interesting. Um, a point of interest. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And the rest of those are going to be so I'd have to look at those. Mm. Okay, maybe we'll check those out. Um, Suppose you could use the black hole in Maya to zoom in on the Andromeda galaxy. So, <laughs> yeah, there's all sorts of cool things like that you're supposed to be able to do. Um, the only reference to Farsight I found in the Canon Codex is a bit of a blog, okay? Um, yeah, wormholes and stuff like that. So who knows what's going to be added in the future? Um, that sort of stuff might be cool. Let's see. I'm, I'm curious, actually, to who the memorial is for. So I'm, I'm going to go and visit that while I'm here. So apologies for getting you all to pop down here, but you can kind of rock in. Let's go and visit this... This memorial, see if we can find out who um, who this guy was. So if you follow me, I'm going to just jump up out of the rings. Um, let me see if we can jump into frame shift. Let's go and check this listening post out. See what um, what's going on there. see what this is so for listening post is yeah okay let's just pop over here Find out who Fluck was. <laughs> My bet is the end of the Raxler mystery will give the player base a galactic hyperdrive like in the original Elite, except we'll actually go to other galaxies. Um, it's a listening post memorial to his pet dog. Okay, so let's let's go investigate that. While we're here, uh, we might as well go. Uh, Four point three days. It's going to take us a while to get there. Let's uh, put a bit more power into the frame of drive. Um, oh, Yamix. <laughs> Yamix hosted the stream. Thank you very much, Yamix. Appreciate that. Um, so, um, um, <laughs> thanks for coming along, fella. <laughs> uh, so, I've, I've had the pleasure of meeting Yamix at some of the um, um, the official conventions as well, which is which is always quite amusing. So, um, I've, I've I've been privileged to meet Obsidian Ant Yamix and uh, and DJ Truthsayer, of course, when he was still streaming Elite Dangerous. He's now a big deal with Stellaris, so um, some people have moved on from Elite Dangerous to other games. But um, always a pleasure to meet the famous YouTubers of, of Elite Dangerous as well. So, good to have you here, my friend. Um, so, yeah, so um, Raxler, well, um, Raxler is a mystery that's going to run and run and run until Frontier decides to do something with it. Um, I wouldn't mind, I've, I've said before, I wouldn't mind having a crack at it myself, but um, who knows, okay, who knows. Uh, right, so this, this memorial is actually quite a long way out. Now, what I want to do is I want to do another hyperspace jump, okay? Um, you know, you've made it when Yamex is calling you rude names. <laughs> Excellent. Um, 
so um, yeah, it's, it's yeah. There's 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 a few names in Elite Dangerous that have now kind of gone into the you know into the into the annals of time, isn't it? Which is with um, yeah with um, um, some of the key explorers and some of the notorious some of the notorious assassins in Elite Dangerous, which we won't talk about as well. Um, but um, <laughs> um, and the Obsidian Ant, of course, has been there since since very early on. Um, doing his videos of, of, of pretty much everything that's been going on, um, and um, Yamix, I think it's fair to say you have a slightly different flavour of, of presentation. <laughs> um, so, oh yeah, so <laughs> Yamix, Drew Wager is great, great at camping in laser tag. Yeah, so <laughs> that's more the fact that I can't move around as fast as I used to be able to. Really, <laughs> we had a was that a fantastic of we had a <laughs> the laser tag match. <laughs> I do vaguely recall that. That was quite funny. Um, so all good stuff. Right. So we're, we're closing in. Let's, let's find out what happened to Mr. Fluck or his dog or whatever it was. And then we will organize a, a little bit of a jump. Now, I've got a little bit of a surprise for you all. OK, so last week I, I regaled you with my not very well played um, 8 bit sort of MIDI theme tune music. OK, um, so I've been working on something for a few weeks, which I'm now ready to um, I'm now ready to provide to you for your delectation and delight. Okay, um, so we will. I will. I will get to that in due course, so we can organise our last hyperspace jump, uh, like we did last week. So let's see if we can get as many people in the instance again um, and organise for that. So we're gonna we're gonna head for Memorial for Fluck and <laughs> find out what that is, and then we're gonna use that as our rendezvous point for the next uh, mass hyperspace jump, uh, which is a nice way to end the um, nice way to end the stream, I think. Um, and looks like this is down in the rings again. So we might as well go and visit these places while we're here. It, you know, it, it plugs at the ready, yes. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. See what you think. I'm, I'm, I'm reasonably proud of it, but it's probably not up to modern production standards. We'll see how we do. We'll see how we do. Um, is this in the rings? Looks like it is, actually. Oh, it's just it's below the rings. Look at that. That's a bit sneaky of it. Um, so be careful how you approach that. Depending on which way you approach, um, you may get you may hit the rings first. It's right at the back of the planet here at the current position. Kind of in the darkness. So let's drop in here and see what's going on. people already got there. Uh, what's the memorial near? I don't know which system, I don't know which planet I'm in at the moment. Uh, it's a fair way out by the look of it. Um, there's the listing post. I'm scanning it. Does it do anything? Okay, I've got the results. A little bit of tech. There we go. So, uh, what does it tell me? Memorial for Fluck. Oh, hit the wrong button. There we go. Fluck was a survivor from the very beginning and had a troubled past, but he never let that get him down. He pulled through and took us all with him, bringing a light to our lives we hadn't had before. <laughs> with a wagging tail and a caring heart, Fluck was endlessly protective of his closest family, and a hole left when he passed doesn't fully healed. But the memories we have mean he'll live forever. Oh, seven, good boy. We'll play together again one day. Excellent. Oh, <laughs> so is that a memorial to somebody's dog? I don't know if that is that a, is that a player who lost a dog? Um, so I don't know. Does anybody know anything about that one? Um, I hadn't heard of that before. Um, <laughs> that's really quite sad. Okay, Google says yes. Okay, so there's an actual. Somebody had a dog called. Um, oh, so anyway, well, whoever that was, Commander with his dog called Fluck. Um, rest in peace, Fluck. I have, I have a dog myself actually, uh, who has the very unspacey name of Lizzie, um, who's a who's a chocolate Labrador, and um, she's very old now. Um, well, actually, no, that's a good point. Can we be sure it's a dog? I kind of assumed it was a dog. <laughs> a wagging tail is kind of doggish. I mean, it doesn't have to be a dog, I suppose. But normally a wagging, normally a wagging tail is a dog. Okay, 
It is a more of a Commander Skelteros. Okay. Oh, I have to look at, it is a dog. Okay, there we go. I will look that up. Fantastic. Thank you everybody for telling me. So here we are. Anyway, there we are. So we're, we're out in the dark remembering a dog. So that's awesome. Uh, a mixed race that looked like something between a golden retriever and a Labrador. Oh, well, perfect. Another, a Labrador in space. Awesome. <laughs> I'm quite pleased about that. That's quite a good way to do it. Um, right. So anyway, if you can get into the, and he was also my best friend for the next 8.5 years, playfully a protective and jealous of anyone that would think of getting near me. Uh, oh, there we go. That's really sweet. Um, so let us get ourselves organized for a jump. Okay. And then I'll do the thing that I'm going to do because we only got about 13 minutes and then I, uh, we need to do the jump at a certain point in time. Um, so let's, where should we go? Uh, we kind of need to be heading out. We could just jump back the way we've come, but um, I kind of feel I want to jump into the nebula a little bit more. Actually, I need to put on the, take the filter off. There we go. Let's jump, let's jump straight into the nebula. Um, there we go. So it's not too far away. Let's do something. So we're gonna, let's just see where that is visually. So we're not jumping through the rings or anything stupid like that. I quite like it when it's just above the ring. Oh, it's not quite above the rings. <laughs> um, well, let's see if I can, where's the planet? It's round the other way, actually. So we're kind of round the wrong way. Um, that looks like a nice direction to go. Now, what I'd like to do is I like to try and identify some stars in that general direction. So if we let's have a look at that one by comparison. Where's that? Okay, that's up a bit. That's a bit too high up. I want one sort of down there. <laughs> Uh, right, so let's let's go down. Let's try that one. Twenty-seven light years is okay. That's getting better, but it's still not quite. I don't know what orientation we're at. That's the problem. It's quite hard to work out sometimes. Uh, so it appears that we're sort of. Yeah, I think. Mm. Let's try it. Let's try that star there. How far away is that? It's 32. Let's try that one. I know it's not heading in quite the right direction. See, it's getting better, but it's still not quite good enough. Uh, I'm just trying to find a very scenic way out. So maybe it's virtually straight down. Let's try that one. There we go, look at that, perfect. Okay, so lock your hyperspace drive. Um, lock your hyperspace drive on the heart sector MX-T B3-1. That's where we'll do our hyperspace jump to, okay? Um, that one That one looks right. So it's sort of just nicely across the rings. We've got the planet on one side um, and we can um, we can kind of hyperspace off across the rings in that direction. That'll be, that'll be quite cool. Um, so it's only 14 light years away. So everybody should be able to do that. Okay, so lock onto that one and we'll get organized. Now, uh, while I do this, now you remember I was playing, <laughs> uh, you remember I was playing um, not very good um, renditions of the, the, <laughs> the Frontier theme tune. Now, for those of you who don't know, which is probably not many of you now, um, the, 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 the original game didn't actually really have a theme tune. It was kind of before computers had decent sound in many ways. Um, but the second game had a rather natty piece of music composed for it um, um, called um, yeah, but Front Frontier Elite to the theme. So I, um, in the last few weeks, have been learning to play it and I've sequenced it old school, okay? I've sequenced it old school style using MIDI because I knew how that worked, because I did a lot of MIDI composition in the 90s uh, and in the noughties, and it's gone and fallen away now, really, because no, you know, it's retro, it's, it's not something you need to do. So I have, for your delectation and delight, I have sequenced, um, using my, um, my, my old school skills, 
um, the Frontier Elite 2 theme tune in its entirety. Now, I've, what I've done is, you know, you've seen this before, I've, I've played it on my, my only two octave, there we go, I can't really see it, there we go, uh, a Kai keyboard, which is very small, but it's a bit, as you can see, uh, set to electric guitar. So here we go. So it's, it's, yeah, it's ready to go, right? <laughs> um, and I have also, I have also sequenced for your delectation and delight, the original elite theme, kind of, which is the Blue Danube. So somebody mentioned that as well, okay? So not only have we got, which is my kind of slightly midi electric guitar, um, <laughs> we've also got the Blue Danube as well. So I have sequenced it midi start. Now, here we go. So. I'll, what I'll do is I'll do the Blue Danube first, okay, while we're waiting. So everybody try and get into the instance, lock onto that sector you can see on the screen. Um, and I'm going to show you my sort of retro, um, here we go, this is my, <laughs> this is my Blue Danube retro um, thing. So heart sector MX-TB3-1, okay, so here goes. Um, um, so MIDI isn't dead, it's still here and very much. Are people still doing it? I thought it was kind of dead. <laughs> um, but I, I, have, I, have sequenced, I have sequenced the, the Blue Danube here um, for you. <laughs> so we'll see, we'll see how well this works. Okay. Um, I may need to adjust the, the stream volume, I'll see how this works. I don't think I've got it as a separate thing. All right, here we go. So this is, this is, this is the Blue Danube, I'll start it playing. Uh, where's my mixer? I might need to switch that around. There we go. So this is old school. This is old school stuff. Here we go. Blue Danube. This is this is how it was. <laughs> Do you like the harp? Well, I thought that was quite good. <laughs> this is proper old school, I have to say. It's not really got anything to do with Elite, but there we go. Now, for those of you who don't actually know what MIDI is, it's just on off keyboard digital things with velocity, which basically tells you how hard the key's being hit. But it's proper old school stuff. I just like all the meters going up and down. <laughs> now, on the, this, this piece of music originally came out on the Commodore 64 version of Elite, so it does have an Elite connection, okay? It's obviously mostly famous for its use in 2001 A Space Odyssey for the docking sequence, which Elite copied, or at least paid homage to, so that's why it's got an Elite connection. So there we go. <laughs> that, was, that, was my, that was my rendition of, um, of, of the Blue Danube, okay, uh, for for MIDI using, I thought uh, the, the um, synthesizer I've got on this computer isn't too bad actually, it sounds vaguely realistic, but it's, MIDI always has that slightly mechanical flavour to it, which is, which is quite good fun. So there we go, so how are we doing? We've got, we've got our hyperspace jump organised. Right, so um, before we go, right, we're going to do the hyperspace jump exactly at 21.00, um, zero, zero, okay, game time. Um, so 2100 game time, we're going to hyperspace jump and that will, that will mark the end of the stream. But before that, okay, so get your hyperspace drives ready to go. Um, before that, the other little treat I've got for you is, I've secret, <laughs> spent quite a lot of time on this. Um, <laughs> it's not perfect, but I'm actually quite proud of it, right? Um, so um, uh, this is my rendition of the Frontier Elite 2 theme tune. Okay, so this is proper retro. So after the Blue Danube and Elite, the original game, the Frontier Elite 2 came out with what's actually a very good piece of music. If you seek out the actual orchestral version, it's very, very cool. Now this is the MIDI version, which is, 
<laughs> not as good, but I've I've enjoyed doing this and going because I used to do quite a lot of this back in the day, and um, so I have I have rendered here for your delectation and delight um, the Frontier Elite Two, and I've I've made a few mods to it just for my own fun and games really. So here we go. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> um, I'm going to put that there, actually, so we can just watch the screen a little bit. Otherwise, I'm going to run out of time. Uh, let's just move that along so the chat still shows up. There we go. Um, oops. Don't click on the wrong screen. There we go. That'll do. So there we go. Uh, yeah, you can see everything. Right, so here we go. So this is this is my version of the Frontier theme tune. He says, bracing for impact. Here we go. Just hoping it's working. Oh, here it comes. Yep. Right, one minute to hyperspace, my friends. One minute to hyperspace. Get ready to go. Thirty seconds to hyperspace. <laughs> Ten seconds. Here we go. And there we go, hyperspace <laughs> home. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. That was good fun. <laughs> so that was my rendition of the theme tune. So you people have said, um, yeah, so what I might try and do actually for the last few streams, maybe we can, I need to work out exactly how long the, um, how long the, um, piece of music is I haven't worked out yet because it does it in beats rather than seconds so I might have to mix it down to MIDI uh, mix it down to mp3 <laughs> figure out how long it is and then we can time it so that the music plays while we're doing the hyperspace jump <laughs> see if we can get that really smooth by the end of the end of the expedition <laughs> so there we go so that was that was that so um, if you want a copy of that um, I'll see if I can find a place to stick the um, the MIDI file um, or the MP3, um, <laughs> we make a reasonable, a reasonable ringtone. Yeah, that's quite funny. Um, so, 
<laughs> can I have Battlestar Galactica music? I'll see if I can. Oh, I can see if I can sequence that. Okay, see if I can do a sequence for Battlestar. Um, it takes me a couple of weeks to do each song because I haven't got that much time. It's not easy doing MIDI stuff actually. But there we go. Um, there we go. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed a slight. There's always going to be a bit of a nostalgia fest on my streams, as you know, because I'm a child of the 80s and I love that old tech stuff. So, you know, the only thing missing for me was a floppy disk drive, but there we go. Um, oh, I can change. Oh, I can change the time display with Mixcraft and Beats. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Oh, real Alex is. Um, um, yes, I need to get in contact with you, don't I, for all sorts of Mixcraft help. So, I will, I'm going to have a look at that. I know how to do the MIDI bit, but um, um, the rest of it was kind of eluding me a little bit, but there we go. <laughs> So, anyway, what I will do, um, I'll, I'll log out now, but I'll just, I'll replay it so you can kind of just enjoy with the um, the music. So um, yeah, so it's it's an interpretation of um, that Frontier Elite too. Now I've actually I know I've spoken to David Lowe on a few occasions, and he's he's cool with people doing versions of his music, so that that's kind of okay. Um, um, and that Frontier Elite Two theme is actually his copyright, so. Um, you know, and he's pretty relaxed with it. So uh, as long as you're respecting us, hopefully I did that. <laughs> but there we go. So anyway, so thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, my friends, for um, for your company tonight. We will rendezvous in the next system. Uh, we're not too far away to go and discover the uh, former Dine Rift bases next week. And um, we will go on from there. So um, I hope you enjoy. Hope you enjoyed the stream, and um, yeah, I will see you next week. So we've got—is um, it three more or two more? Um, I think it's three more, isn't it? Three more, um, three more, um, three more things, and then our expedition is complete. Um, but there we go. So, um, and we'll we'll see what we do after that. But thank you very much. You guys take absolute care of yourself. Be good. Look after yourselves. Have a fantastic weekend. I don't see you before then, and obviously, 07 and right on, commanders. Be good, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>